In this video, we'll talk a little bit about compactness and what that means in for subsets of Rn. So before we even do that, let's give our first example of, a, uh, of an important set that we'll be seeing over and over again. This is more along the lines of notation rather than a definition, but for each number in Rn, for each vector rather, and for any number, which we'll think of as a radius for any non-negative number, uh, for any delta greater than zero, set v delta at c to be the open disk around the point c of radius delta. So this will be the set of all elements x in Rn, set of all n tuples of numbers, such that the distance from x to c is less than delta. So this looks exactly like what you might think. It's the disk of radius delta around the point C that does not contain its boundary. And if you look in the notes, there's an exercise that asks you to confirm uh, that the unit circle, the unit sphere rather, um, around the point C of radius delta is precisely the boundary of this region. So uh, using this, we can actually, um, it, this will be very important, and we'll discuss uh, examples of compact sets. And, but before we do that, we have to first give the definition. So um, we'll start off with uh, the definition of what it means to be bounded for a subset. We've already discussed for what it means for a subset to be closed. So that's one other thing we need to define, um, a subset. A in Rn is bounded if and only if there exists a number R, let's say, uh, which is greater than or equal to zero. I guess this could be for any, this definition still, well, no, this, the, it's the empty set if delta is equal to zero, but um, we can still make sense of that definition. So let's just work with this for simplicity. If there exists uh, an R greater than zero, such that A is contained in this unit, in this unit disk. So I can, I can construct a unit disk large enough um, such that A is actually contained in it. And let's say it's centered at zero. So if A could be some you know, oblong set, let's say A is something like this, right? This is A. And let's say this is the origin here. So let me write that as 0. Uh, clearly, if I chose this number, this region is not large enough to contain this one. But if I increased, if I increased the radius, then I know that there's some radius beyond which this set is finally contained in the neighborhood, the open disk around the center. So that's what it means for a subset to be bounded. Now we'll begin by one more extra step before we define compactness. So uh, an open cover of a subset of Rn, so of A, which is a subset of Rn, is a set of open subsets of Rn. A set of open subsets of Rn. And let's call that set curly O, such that A is contained in the union of all of those open subsets. The union of, let's call them U, is an element of curly O of U. And using this definition, we will define compactness. Last semester, we talked about compactness in terms of sequences. Um, and in the exercises in the notes, you'll see that there's an equivalent definition that we can make for compactness. But the one we'll be using for now is a subset A is compact 
if and only if, for every open cover of A, there exists a finite subcover of A. This means that I can have, this set has absolutely no restriction. I can have infinitely many open sets in O. In fact, I can have uncountably many open uh, sets in O. Uh, what this is saying is that if I take a set, find an open cover of it, I should always, and even if that open cover is infinite, um, then I should be able to find a finite number of those open sets that still cover that same set. That's exactly what it means to be compact. If you can do this for every single open cover, that's ra a rather difficult challenge to meet. Um, you can imagine that you know you have to. What if you want to prove something like this? Uh, a statement about whether a set is compact or not. Um, verifying it would require you, in some sense, to check this condition for every single open set, open cover, which might be difficult. Um, and we'll actually give you an example right now of how you can do that. And just to see how difficult it is to actually do this directly, um, in practice, we often check this condition by some form of contradiction. Uh, so the theorem is that every closed rectangle in Rn is compact. So in order to check this, like I said, you would have to say, okay, you give me an open cover, and I will have to find the finite subcover of that. The problem is that there's an uncountable number of po possibilities for um, open covers. And as a result, it's impossible to check every single case. So instead, and instead of giving the proof, I'll give a proof sketch. And this will just give you the idea of how to think about one way to prove this. So first, we should set some notation. Let's say R is our closed rectangle. And um, I'm not necessarily sure if we need to know exactly the form that R is in. Uh, probably not. But let's write it just in case. Um, it's of the form A1, B1, cross all the way up to A, N, B, N. Again, for some real numbers, A, N, B, uh, A, I, B, I, where A, I is less than or equal to B, I for all I. So this is our closed rectangle. And instead of proving it directly, instead, suppose to the contrary that there exists an open cover. Um, Let's see if I have to give it a name. Let's call it O. If there exists an open cover O of R with no finite subcover, suppose something like this were true. Now, let's draw our rectangle. And again, the rest of this proof will just be a sort of a sketch. And I'll make this rectangle even larger so that. I don't, I'm forced to not write too much. Uh, and just to give you the idea instead. So let's say this is our rectangle R. What we can do is, well, if O has no finite subcover, then if I split this rectangle into different pieces, such as if I cut each interval in half, the proof is going to be very similar to the case for in closed intervals in Rn. If I cut this rectangle in half, in all of its directions, then I'll get 2 to the n sub rectangles back. In the case of R2, I'll have four rectangles. And if there's no finite subcover of R, then that means that there's no finite subcover that covers all of these. So there must be at least one rectangle. Let's say it's this one. Let's call this one R1 where no finite subcover of O covers this. And think about logically why that should be true. If we could find a finite subcover of this, and a finite subcover of this, and a finite subcover of this, and this, 
then that would be four finite subcovers. Take the union of all of those, that's still finite, and therefore we would have a finite cover of the entire rectangle, which is opposite to what we're supposing in the first place. Um, so there must exist at least one such subrectangle for which no finite subcover exists. Now we can do this process again. So take this rectangle and cut it in half into these different pieces. And again, by the same logic, at least one of these subrectangles must have no finite subcover. So let's isolate that one. So let's call this one R2, for instance. And we keep on doing this process. And what you notice is that we'll actually get a nested sequence of closed rectangles. So for, we get this for free. Um, we obtain a nested sequence of closed rectangles. R1 through R, well, all the way down. And by the nested, by the closed nested rectangle theorem, we know that there exists some element in the infinite intersection. So that means if I zoom in far enough, I keep going and I keep going, I cut this, I zoom in, I zoom in, I zoom in, I zoom in, there's going to be some point all the way in this infinite intersection. Let's say somewhere there. And these rectangles are also getting smaller and smaller and smaller, in fact, very quickly. And the limit of their diameter, the largest distance between any of two of its points, is approaching zero rather quickly, exponentially quickly. Although the speed at which it um, converges is irrelevant for this discussion. And so uh, what I can do is I know that there is, because I have an open cover, that means this limiting point, which exists, we know that it exists by this pre the previous theorem we had, um, we know that one element of the open cover has to contain it. Otherwise, it wouldn't be a cover of our rectangle R to begin with. So pick one of those open sets. I don't know what it looks like. It could be very strange. Um, let me just draw a random you know, blob around it. Maybe something like that. I'm not sure how easy that is to visualize with all of this clutter here. Um, maybe I'll completely fill it in so that it's easier to view this. So we have this open set containing our point. And because of this, we know by the definition of what it means to be open that there exists an open rectangle that contains the point and is contained in that open set. That's what it means for set. And as a result, this rectangle has to have some length in each of its directions. And because of that, because the lengths of all of the ri, or the, or the rk rather, are getting smaller and smaller and smaller, eventually these rectangles in this infinite sequence will be contained in that rectangle that I have around the point C. And this means, and I won't write the rest of this just so you get the idea of the proof, that at this point at which the smaller and smaller rectangles are all contained in this one, which is contained in the open set that we have, uh, we know that that element in the open cover that contains that point, that limiting point, contains infinitely many of the, of the rectangles RK. In fact, it contains the tail end of all of them after some large enough step, after we zoom in and cut far and far enough away. Now, we know that we have this fact. We have the fact that um, eventually, maybe I can write this part, that up to some Rn, Rn plus 1, and so on, all of these are contained in some open set. This is contained in some open set which is in the cover. But now, we have a finite number of 
so now what we have is, th so actually here's, here's where the contradiction comes in. Um, we assumed that each of these Rns were constructed to have no finite subcover at all. But here we found an open set that contains all of them, in, in particular one of them, which is contradictory to the fact that we're assuming that there is no finite subcover for any one of these divisions that we've made. And because of that contradiction, that proves the theorem. And that's the end of the proof, to show that every closed rectangle is in fact compact. You can think, well, is the converse true? Is every compact subset uh, a closed rectangle? And that's false. Um, and next time we'll discuss uh, what sort of subsets are compact. What are all the possible compact subsets of Rn?